Hello, um, welcome to the first uh, tutorial, and it's, uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. It's going to be a tutorial for my patch, a patch that I've just recently created. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, when I say fantastic, it means it's basically as primitive as can be with the intention of someday being elegant and uh, quite possibly utilize this building block for other grand uh, projects. So, what we have right over here is uh, what I call the uh, deck. Actually, that is uh, this over here. That's the deck. And this guy over here is a, a parameter select subscreen. And it floats. Let's see that deck again. Cool. So here's the deck. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play for you a really nifty sequence. It's pretty fantastic. It's very bland and fantastic and minimal and exciting. So uh, it's going through its thing. It's uh, relatively fantastic and exciting and bland. And uh, what it's missing is some change and variety. Uh, particularly if you've heard it as many times as I've heard it, if I don't know. So I'm going to go to this little screen right here, which can pop up and down. And it is uh, it's pretty exciting. It uh, makes changes. In this case, it finds the operator. And it can, uh, we're going to update it a bit. We're going to say get devices. This little functionality here with the getting devices, I just ripped that from the uh, side chainer that uh, Mike from Track Team Audio made. He's the man. So is the uh, uh, author PP, who posted this uh, floating step sequencer that I also lifted code from. Uh, he's pretty cool. Thank you for doing that. I like it. I'm still sorting it out. There might be some bugs. So uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to assign it to things. Operator, sustain, that sounds good. But does it work? We'll find out. And it does. OK. I'm changing the spread, the transpose, and the volume. Well, you know, that transpose is a real problem. It's I'm getting nightmares of children's cartoons from the 80s, early 90s. I want multi-colored cereal, and I want to change this. So what am I going to, am I going to do? I'm going to uh, pop this puppy open. Now, if I put it over here, it's easier to access. It doesn't conflict with the uh, interface. But again, I need to change it because it's driving me fucking crazy. So, we're going to go over to here where it says transpose. And we're going to say, we don't want it to be transpose anymore. We want it to be, um, I don't know. We want it to be decay. That sounds more exciting and intuitive. We're going to come back over here, and we are very quickly going to change the transpose level. The world has come. The world is peaceful. The world is ready to be modulated. Here we go. What are we going to do? So, you know, what do we have here? We've got the option of doing little changes. In the future, they'll be more exciting, I'm thinking. Right now, it's just a slider, but throw some logic, some counters, some envelopes on top of that, and step sequencers, and all of a sudden, you've got this little tiny thing in a clutch that you can pop open. The way I see it, there's a lot of potential here. Uh, live is great. I think it's pretty wonderful. I think that Maxwell Live is going to be a great opportunity for us to have a framework such as Live that is utilitarian and uh, intuitive, but also sort of uh, implies and suggests more uh, creative and personalized approaches towards rocking out on electronic music. Thanks, guys. Um, bye.